Media Accessibility and Access Services Module 1A Unit 4 Users and Access Services Video 2 Hello and welcome back to Unit 4 of Module 1A dedicated to Media Accessibility and Access Services. I am Isabel Robert, Senior Lecturer at the University of Antwerp. Let's now turn to Access Services for audiovisual products. Here, we will not refer to specific needs to categorize the services, but we will use insights from recent research in media accessibility and accessibility studies. As explained in the first video on access services, we can think of many typologies, and one of the criteria is, for example, whether the access service includes some kind of translation process. This approach suggested by Gian Maria Greco and Anna Jankowska, two researchers in media accessibility and accessibility studies, is the one we are going to take. The researchers divide access services for audiovisual products, which they call media accessibility modalities, in two groups, translation-based and non-translation-based. But what does that mean? While translation-based media accessibility modalities consist of creating new content through interlingual, intralingual, or intersemiotic translation or interpreting, non-translation-based modalities offer accessibility through, for example, the digital processing of existing content or the creation of content through an activity other than translation or interpreting. They define translation-based access services, or MA modalities, in terms of three major approaches in audiovisual translation and translation studies. If you have studied or are studying translation or interpreting, these approaches should ring a bell. First, the classical division of translation into interlingual, intralingual and intersemiotic of Jacobson. Second, the distinction between translation and interpreting, as suggested by Paul Hacker. And third, the classification of four types of signs that compose an audiovisual text, that is to say, audio-verbal, audio-nonverbal, visual-verbal, and visual-nonverbal signs. Let's start with translation-based access services, and in particular, those that are categorized under interpreting interpreting being different from translation by its immediacy. These services are live audio description, live subtitles, and sign language interpreting. We have defined audio description before as an oral text read during the performance, which gives a verbal rendering of the visual information to which certain audiences might not have access. Greco and Jankowska defined the live version of AD and in this case AD for audiovisual products, as a verbal description of audiovisual media content. It is both created and delivered live, and this is why it can be classified as intersemiotic interpreting from audio nonverbal, visual verbal, and visual nonverbal signs into audio verbal signs. Live subtitles have not been defined yet. They are also known as real time subtitles and they provide immediate access to the media content by real-time speech-to-text conversion. They can also be used at live events. They can be either inter- or intralingual. Live subtitles can be created, amongst other methods, through velotype, stenography, respeaking, or automatic speech recognition respeaking, and that is the way we're going to learn in this course. They can be classified as interlingual or intralingual interpreting, in which audio-verbal and audio-nonverbal signs are rendered as visual-verbal and visual-nonverbal signs. Sign language interpreting has already been defined in the previous video as the rendering of verbal information through sign language using hand signs, gestures and facial expressions. Here, the researchers give the following definition. Sign language interpreting is used to transfer spoken, written, and audio content into sign language. Sign language interpreting can either be pre-recorded or performed live. It can be defined as intralingual interpreting from 
audio verbal, audio non verbal, and verbal visual signs into visual verbal signs. Let's now turn to translation based services that are not considered interpreting. Dubbing, voiceover, and subtitles are three forms of interlingual translation based access services. AD, extended AD, and audio narration are three forms of intersemiotic translation. And finally, enriched subtitles and transcript combine different types of translation. Dubbing and voiceover are two types of interlingual translation of mainly audio-verbal signs into mainly audio-verbal signs. Dubbing is a modality in which the original track of source language dialogues is replaced by a track with dialogues translated into the target language, which tries to reproduce the original timing, phrasing and lip movements. Voiceover is a service in which the translation is overlaying the original, which is played at a reduced volume level. Subtitles is a third form of interlingual translation, but here mainly audio verbal signs are rendered into visual verbal signs. The researchers distinguish between three forms of intersemiotic translation AD, extended AD, and audio narration. AD should ring a bell, as we discussed it in the previous video. The researchers defined AD as an intersemiotic translation practice in which audio nonverbal, visual verbal, and visual nonverbal signs are translated into audio verbal signs. If AD is created through script translation, it can also be classified as interlingual translation. As opposed to standard AD, Extended AD uses freeze frame to pose the audiovisual media and introduce longer and more detailed descriptions than it would normally be possible. Extended AD is usually pre recorded by either a human voice talent or by text to speech software. Audio narration is a verbal description of audiovisual media content that, unlike AD, does not follow the on screen action. The researchers define audio narration as an intersemiotic translation in which audio verb nonverbal, visual verbal, and visual nonverbal signs are translated into audio verbal signs. Enriched subtitles contain added elements that make them relevant to specific groups of users. They are more commonly known as SDH or closed captions. They are a restricted case of the so-called enhanced subtitles, that is to say, subtitles enriched with additional information such as definitions of acronyms, foreign terms, difficult language, idioms, jargon, cultural references, as well as links to email addresses or phone numbers. From the AVT point of view, they can be classified as intersemiotic, interlingual or intralingual translation in which audio-verbal and audio nonverbal signs are translated into visual verbal and visual nonverbal signs. Transcripts are textual versions of the audiovisual media content that, aside from spoken word, may include on screen text as well as key visual and key audio elements. It can be defined as an interlingual or intralingual translation from audio verbal, audio nonverbal, visual verbal, and visual nonverbal signs into visual verbal signs. Let's now move on to non-translation-based access services. Greco and Jankowska distinguish between six services or modalities which are not based on translation process, and they are audio introductions, audio subtitles, clean audio, speech rate conversion, screen reading, and tactile reproductions. In the previous video, we have already shortly defined audio introduction as an oral text read out before the performance and which contains some essential information about it. In the case of an audiovisual product, the audio description has a similar objective. It usually includes details about characters, costume, cast, cinematic language, or even the plot or the creative team. You probably also remember audio subtitles. In the case of a live cultural event, audio subtitles are provided during the performance and give an oral reading of subtitles or surtitles. Audio subtitles for audiovisual products are also known as spoken subtitles. 
They consist of a vocal rendering of interlingual subtitles. They are usually combined with audio description. They can be pre-recorded or delivered live either by a human voice talent or text-to-speech software. Clean Audio is a selectable audio track enhanced through signal processing. The aim is to improve the intelligibility of the dialogue and of vital non-verbal information with regard to ambient noise. Speech rate conversion allows broadcasted speech rate to be decreased or increased while maintaining the original sound quality and immediacy since the processed speech fits within the broadcasting time. In the case of a decreased speech rate, we speak of a slow reproduction. A slow reproduction improves listening experience and understanding. When the speech rate is increased, we speak of a fast reproduction. There is a high demand since many listeners are able to efficiently receive and process information delivered faster than at the usual broadcast speed. Screen reading is a general term used to describe a vast array of software solutions that allow visual information to be conveyed through non-visual means, that is to say, text-to-speech or refreshable braille display. Tactile reproductions, finally, are three-dimensional representations of audiovisual media content, such as the 3D printed figures of the main characters. To sum up, it is clear that you have a lot of services to make an audiovisual product more accessible. This table provides a complete overview of the access services that we have discussed in this video. In this unit, you will watch a few additional videos focusing on some of the access services we have discussed. Again, we have used some videos from the ACT MOOC, but also some videos from the ADLAB Pro course. The ADLAB Pro course has been designed within the framework of the ADLAB Pro project, an Erasmus Plus project funded by the European Union, just as the ACT MOOC. Although the main focus of Adla Pro is AD, there is a module on additional services such as dubbing and voiceover. So these are the two videos from the Adla Pro course that we're going to use in this unit. After the videos, there will be a quiz on the access services discussed in the individual videos. So pay attention and enjoy!